Welcome to Uriah Heep, the Magician's Podcast. I'll be covering every studio song the band has recorded and every bonus track that I can find. Each week we'll go over a new song from the beginning to where they are currently, and as they keep adding albums, I'll keep adding shows. Let the deep dive party begin. In the magic garden, some were singing, some were dancing. Hello and welcome to another episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast, our final show of season 21, Wake the Sleeper, released in June of 2008. We'll be moving on shortly, but not before we cover this one and only bonus track, You Are the Only One. Now, this was not released on the deluxe CD issue. This was only found, the only place I was able to find it was the 40th anniversary anthology called On the Rebound. And to expand on that a little bit more from the official Uriah Heap website, hosted by our buddy Dave White, by the way, who is doing an amazing job with the thousands of pages that that thing has attached to it. (laughs) You know, it's like an octopus that keeps growing tentacles that go to really cool places. Uh, This says, uh, released on the Wake the Sleeper DJ promo copy only in June of 2008. So only sent out to DJs. Interesting. Uh, Why would you send a bonus track that you hadn't released? And then people would hear it and they'd be like, well, I can't get the song anywhere. That would be frustrating. But, you know, the compilation came out in 2010, so they wouldn't have to wait too long if that song did get played on the radio. But that was the first time it was uh, commercially released was on the On the Rebound, a very heavy 40th anniversary collection. And that's where I was lucky enough to find it. And so we're going to dig into it right now. Here it is. You are the only one by your right heat. What a dynamic 6-4 measure opening that was. It's really a count of two and a count of four, but if I were playing it, I would probably just count it as six. And uh, really nice. I like that that snare at the first part of it that kind of just throws everything off at the beginning where the one is. And uh, yeah, yeah, very cool. I had to count it a couple times to be sure, but yeah, it is 6-4. Sometimes. Yeah, I really like this. It kind of goes back again to that that 50s feel that I was talking about a couple songs ago and uh, just just much heavier. I love the sound of the bass. He's getting a really killer heavy low end sound. Um, drums are fantastic. Everything is just just there. You know, uh, the vocals are just kind of going along. You know, I, I feel almost like you could sing that song and just kind of, you know, rock from one side to the other and and just follow the the pulse of it, if you will. I will say that the vocals sound a little bit dry, and that is not a, a knock on Bernie at all. There just doesn't seem to be much reverb on them as compared to the rest of the songs on the album. So it seems a bit, uh, you know, a bit like it's it's missing that extra, you know, sheen of, of gloss on it. But apart from that, uh, it sounds really good. I love the feel of the song. It's it's really just got that that, you know, forward motion that 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 only a six, four time signature can give you. like the drums in that section and it just made me realize this is the second 6-4 song we've had on this album and what changed oh the drummer 
<laughs> so see, as, as I've mentioned on a couple of occasions throughout this season, uh, it is very common that one person can make a change in the band's sound just by bringing the stuff that they bring and kind of, you know, a fresh perspective, something different for the band to, to work around and play with makes it exciting for everybody, you know. Um, but, you know, to, to me, and it, it really does make sense why this song didn't make it on the album. I think the tempo is just a little bit too slow. The vocals have to be dragged out to match the timing of the song. And I think they're they're missing a little bit of that passion that we're used to hearing from Bernie. The song structure just doesn't call for it. But because of that, it doesn't feel very powerful. You know, we're used to to Bernie singing with a little bit more intensity, but but this combination of time signature and tempo, it, it just kind of slows things down a little too much, I think. And so the the vocals aren't uh, as exciting for me as they normally would be. So if they came to the band and said, hey, you know what, you guys are like three or four minutes over, you're going to have to pick a song to ditch. I could see why this would be the one. It's still cool. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, Uriah Heap sets the bar pretty high for what a good song is. And, you know, for the most part, as I've said many times, they meet that very easily. But here I just kind of feel like it's, it's like, okay, we have to go record the song, so let's just do it. And no offense to the band, I'm sure they were into it when they were doing it, but it just, I don't know, it just lacks that spark for me. That was a really nice drum roll to transition back into the verse section again. I really like that, actually. Um, compensated for the the missing beat very well. But, um, you know, I realized something, too. The backing vocals on this song are also very 50s. And I wonder if there's just something about that time signature, that 6-4 at certain tempos that throws people back into that time when that was very popular. What do they call it? Like soda fountain music. You know, you would put your your nickel in the jukebox and and you would hear, you know, a variety of songs that kind of sounded like this. Uh, maybe there was, you know, three or four backup singers just doing those ahs like you heard in here. Uh, but it's very, very reminiscent of the style to my ears. Listen to that bass guitar cut through. It sounds so good. I would not be surprised if he was playing with a pick there because it really does have a harder edge to it. He may not have been, but it sounds like he might have been. See, when I'm looking at the waveform, everything looks nice and fairly even, um, but it sounds like they, they hit that compressor a little hard at a couple points there, and it was kind of on the edge of cutting out uh, as, it, as the compressor squashes back the music so it doesn't go over that certain threshold. Um, but the song sounds good. I mean, it has a good feel to it. I just, I don't know, I just still think that the tempo is a little slow. I think that's what it is for me. If it were a little faster, it would cause the, the vocals to go a little faster and you would put a little more breath and in, in, in stuff into it. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go with that's the reason that the song feels a little bit off to me. It's not bad by most band standards, but we are talking about Uriah Heep here. I will say that apart from the slightly dry sounding vocals, the song is actually mixed very well. You can hear the guitar, you can hear the organ, you can hear the bass, drums are cutting through, of course, 
Um, they're just going to make their way through. But everything just sounds like it's blended very nicely. The vocals are resting on top of everything just perfectly. And uh, I have to say, the mix is really good. Loving the odd time signatures that we're hearing on this album. Again, I'm going to guess probably an influence of Russell's. It's not uncommon for the drummer to introduce those ideas. Not always, but it's it's not unheard of by any means. And uh, but I like the way that they handle it. The songs flow really well. It just you you know that something's off. You won't necessarily know what it is, but you're like there's something weird about that part. And you'll think it might just be the way they played it or the transition of it. But honestly, it's just the time signature of it. And that sounds really cool. I love the sound of the China there. Um, definitely not the the trashy sort of sound that we heard on the last song, but uh, very powerful, very swishy, which I like. And um, yeah, that was a cool part. I say that we're probably going to hear a nice little guitar solo right about now. Yeah, great solo. Absolutely great solo. And I'm really glad that they switched back to 4-4 for the solo section because, you know, it, it can be awkward sometimes when you're trying to do a solo and you're in your head, you're just automatically going back to the four count that you're used to. But here you have a six count and, you know, you have to fill another half of um, what you would normally fill or a third of what you, you would normally fill. So it, it feels sometimes very awkward to try and be comfortable and just focus on the feeling of it and what notes you're playing when you're playing in a time zone that, or a time zone. <laughs> uh, there you go. Uh, you know, it, it's it's getting late over here. Obviously, I'm getting a little bit loopy, but it's our last show of the season. You know, I'm, I'm in that I'm excited to start the new album and, and get into it, but I'm kind of sad that we're done with this album at the same time. Um, speaking of time, time signature is the word that I was going for um, before I got kicked off my own show. But yeah, it's it can be hard sometimes to solo over a count that you're not comfortable with. You just get very used to that four count and it's in your head and you, you do it completely subconsciously. So sometimes that can be a little bit awkward, um, especially if you're not used to playing in, in a lot of different time signatures. But uh, I thought it was done very well here. I, I think the transition back into the next part was really smooth as well. Um, yeah, a very cool solo, very much in on par with the song. And the song magically sounds a little fuller than it did earlier before the solo. And I think there's just a, an extra keyboard layer or something in there that's giving the sound a bit more thickness. Sounds really good, though. It's not encroaching on anything. It's just making the song sound a little bit bigger. And then, of course, we had those backing vocals come in again and really give it that uh, that treatment that, again, just kind of reminds me of 50s music. But it sounds really good. You know, um, it's starting to feel a little more energetic for me now. Maybe I'm just getting more settled into the song and I usually don't need to do that. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm still digging it. 
I'm still digging it, but I could see why, again, why it was left off if, if you had to pick one. I heard a weird noise in the background after, you know, you are the only one at the beginning of this section. Not quite sure what it was. I heard it in my right ear. I I couldn't really isolate it enough to tell. Um, It could have been just, you know, a punching it on a track and and that noise got on there. Could be a lot of things. But in any case, um, yeah, that was a little bit weird. But apart from that, yeah, really cool song. You know, uh, I love how Russell's ride cymbal cuts through on this one. Um, I, I get a little bit sick of that da 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 da, you know, with the crash cymbals and just that psh, 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 as they're as they're going into tr- to the transition. I like a little bit of variety there, um, but yeah, apart from that, uh, really cool. I, I really do love the passion that Bernie sings with when he sings this low, but I do feel like this one's just a little bit, kind of just not not fully loaded to me. Yeah, that was some cool playing, uh, especially from Trevor and Phil, um, just kind of going off doing their thing. Russell backing them up with some hi-hat dynamics there. Sounded really good. Um, kind of feel like Phil wanted to keep the song going and everyone else was like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> you know, uh, kind of a, a bit of a, a shock ending. But in any case, yeah, I started second guessing myself on the time signature because I can count it in four and it works, but I think it actually works better counting it in six. So I'm going to count it and then you guys decide, you know, whatever whatever you think is right. One, two, three, four, five, six, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six. See, and that puts the snare on the four on every count. So I'm sure that six is right. And it feels better for that, um, you know, sort of type tempo. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to settle with six, four. I think that's right. But if you guys disagree, if you count it differently than I do, let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. So thank you guys for, uh, for joining me on another show. This is our Thursday show. So tomorrow we're going to start season 22 and we will. We're going to get through that. And then we've got just a couple of albums left to catch up to live in the dream. And of course, we've got the new studio album. Got a lot more to do. Got some special uh, bonus tracks that I'm going to do for you guys. And then I have another special season that I'll be delivering that some people have asked for. And there we go. So that is going to do it for today. That's going to do it for season 21, you guys. Thank you for joining me for Wake the Sleeper the 2008 Uriah Heep album, their 21st in their 51-year career. Amazing and still going strong. Lots of shows booked for 2022. Uh, Lots to look forward to. So we will see you guys on the next episode tomorrow. Have a great day. Cheers. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Uriah Heep, the Magician's Podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, please consider going over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast outlet, leaving a rating or a review. Be sure to subscribe to make sure that you are notified when new episodes are available. Please be sure to share this podcast with your fellow Uriah Heap enthusiasts and anyone who you think would like Uriah Heap, which should be everyone. 
And if you are so inclined, please feel free to contribute to the Patreon account. And if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you can also pay through the PayPal link on the website listed in the show links below. I would also like to thank Uriah Heap for their very generous support of the show. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Happy days.